All right, guys, I know I'm really late to this one, but we've got to talk about the Konkin bags by Fjall Robin. These bags are everywhere. Like, if I'm on my commute, there's a 100% guarantee that I'm going to see at least one of these bags. Like, they're, they're really popular. It's a popular brand. It's very trendy. And if you don't recognize the brand name, I'm sure you at least recognize this little fox up here. So, on my ski trip last weekend, my bag broke. Uh, real quick here, if you want to hear more about that ski trip, I actually have a video on that. So, I'll link it down below. You could take a peep if you want. Alright, back to the video. And I was feeling pretty lazy, so my search for replacement didn't really involve like any research at all. I pretty much just wandered around Soho until this little fox popped into view. And I said, yeah, that's I've seen that around. I popped in, and I popped out with this guy. And I'll say it, like if I hadn't seen this cute little fox like five times that day, or maybe ten times the day prior, I probably would not have hopped into that store. But like I said before, Fjall Raven is trendy. I'm a sheep. I pretty much bought it because everyone else did. So here we are. Do I regret it? Let's let's talk about it. So before we get into my thoughts and impressions about the Konkin, I first want to discuss what contributed to its dominant position in the market. Uh, so I've split this analysis up into like five categories. The first one is brand. Okay, so Fjall Robin, Swedish for Arctic Fox, was founded by this guy Ake Nordin in 1960. And I must say it's a pretty wholesome brand. Uh, something that stood out to me in particular was their YouTube channel. Like a lot of their videos didn't really directly promote Fjall Robin gear. Um, a lot of them are just sort of centered around general outdoorsmanship. One in particular I found really touching was their video on the Fjall Robin Classic. So the Fjall Robin Classic is this annual trek that they put on, and uh, in 2021, a woman and her disabled daughter completed the trek, the daughter doing so in a wheelchair. Um, and while yes, like the subjects of the video were decked out in Fjall Robin gear and a lot of Fjall Robin products were, were featured, um, the focus of the video really was on the woman and her daughter and their relationship and their achievement, uh, which I thought was really neat. Another tenet of their brand is durability. Their bags are meant to last a lifetime, and indeed they do. There are tons of stories of parents passing their Konkin bags down to their children. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so the brand itself is compelling, so two thumbs up there. Moving on, next up is variety. These Konkins come in a few different variants and a ton of different colors. When I walked into the Konkin store, I was greeted by this multicolored tiling of Konkin bags on the wall. It looked awesome. Likewise, seeing these bags around town, everyone has like a different model and color, and so, you know, your Konkin has a good chance of being somewhat unique in comparison to someone else's. And I think people find that really appealing. Oftentimes, as consumers, we're constrained to like a few different colorways or patterns, uh, but with Konkin, there's over 60 colors to choose from, and even an option to design your own bag from scratch. I picked this black one to better go with my existing wardrobe, but I just as easily could have picked a red one, red being my favorite color. So, that was dumb. This bag ain't just a Konkin, it's my Konkin. It has this sort of collectability to it. Like I could see a consumer going and buying multiple Konkins occurring different styles and colors as one might baseball cards. It's a stretch, but you know, you get the idea. All right, let's recap. So, wholesome brand, varied look. So far, so good. Uh, next up, let's talk about style and form factor. So things definitely obviously get a little subjective here, but in my opinion, it's a very attractive bag. The boxy silhouette does a lot for the bag. It, it stands out from other bags because of it. Um, likewise, I think the sort of angular, structured look of the bag contrasts nicely against the more organic forms of our bodies and the rest of our outfits. And there is room in the market for an aesthetic bag. Like, Take a walk down the street and see how many ugly, like, utilitarian North faces you see. Oof! 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 Eh, I guess this one's okay. I don't know why, but it seems like backpacks have gotten this sort of free pass when it comes to fashion. The Konkin is refreshingly attractive when compared to its contemporaries. And it's a, it's a very simple bag, too. Not a lot of, like, pockets and compartments or tags, clips, or anything like that. It's a, it's a no-frills thing. Uh, that gives it a really classic and clean look. Uh, the simplicity is a double-edged sword, and we'll definitely get into that, but the bag is definitely easy on the eyes. So how much does a nice bag like this run you, right? That brings me to my next point, which is pricing. 
These bags aren't really cheap. They're probably gonna cost you over $100. So I think the pricing is more than just Fjall Raven accounting for production costs and tacking on extra for a profit. No, I think the pricing is a little more intentional than that. I think Fjall Raven set their price high enough so that consumers believe they're, they're getting a, a nice quality bag, but you know, low enough so that consumers don't feel robbed. I invested a fair amount of cash in this bag, so that must mean it's valuable, right? That's not really true. Actually, that's a fallacy, and it's an example of the marketing placebo effect. I've touched on this in another video, but the idea is that regardless of the utility and intrinsic value of a good, a higher price tends to lead consumers to believe that the good is of higher value. In reality, value and price do not have a one-to-one -one correlation. But, you know, consumers aren't rational. Like, I certainly am not. The Konkin sits in this range where the placebo is definitely active, but it's not so high that consumers will get sort of jolted to their senses and forgo their purchase. Which is pretty clever, if you ask me. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about here is icon iconicity. I don't, so, the, the bags are iconic. It's easily recognizable. It doesn't look like other bags aesthetically, which is something we've already talked about. Uh, but something else I think they also really get right is, is this logo here. This cute little red fox right here, smack dab in the middle of every conkin. It's a simple design choice, but it does a lot for the brand. Peep this Herschel bag on the left. It certainly has a logo, but not only is the logo fairly standard, a simple cursive Herschel ain't gonna win any design awards, but it's, it's also quite plain. It doesn't stand out, it doesn't grab the eye. Juxtaposed with Konkin, I mean, that fox is right there, boom. So with this strategy, Fjall Raven is able to build a brand around this bag, without consumers even really knowing the brand's name. And it works. I knew about this little red fox before I knew about Fjall Robin as an outdoors brand. I was like, oh yeah, the little red fox with the boxy bag. And then they took my money. Whew, okay, so that was a lot, but let's go ahead and get to my impressions of this bag. I think right off the bat, you're gonna see that there's, there's really not too much going on here. Yeah, you have your main compartment here, of course, a small pocket on the front of the bag, on the side, uh, a little pouch for, I guess, a water bottle or maybe an umbrella, a laptop sleeve in the back here. Extra, so this unzips. Fairly large pocket for a laptop, but you know, definitely does the job. You know, other than that, like, again, great looking, and, like, nice, kind of unique looking bag, but not too much in the way of storage options here. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open this up. There is quite a lot of space here, but that's pretty much it. It's just like a, a large storage compartment. You're not gonna see like any sub compartments or you know, like small pockets or really anything. It's pretty much this large open space for your things. There is this sort of like sleeve here in the back, which, uh, you know, at first I thought that was like a laptop sleeve, but it's, actually not that it's here to hold uh this foam pad this removable foam pad i guess so i guess all the bags come with this and it's uh the idea here is it's a, it's a seating pad and i guess like if you're you know hiking or something or you're kind of you need to take a break uh, on your errands or something and you can't find a place to sit you can like take this out and sit down on it to be honest i feel like this is kind of gimmicky and i would Definitely, I'm never gonna use this, but I'm not much of an outdoorsman, so maybe this is something that would really come in handy in a pinch. I don't know, I, I don't really see it, but um, it's it's there. I think really the main purpose of this is, is actually just like added comfort for your back, because without this, then there's really not much padding on the back of the bag at all. So I think that's really the, the main functionality there. Closing it back up here on the front, you're gonna see uh, this this front compartment. Again, similar to the main compartment, there's really, there's no sub compartments inside and I, I know you can't actually see from there, but it's it really is just, just another <laughs> place for I guess smaller items. There's no like inner elastic pouches or anything like that, it's just, um, it's kind of just another division of the bag. Um, on the side, on the left side of the bag, you're gonna see this this um, little pouch for a water bottle. This is fine. It would be cool if it stretched a little bit for like a, like I have a larger bottle and I definitely can't fit that in this pouch. So that's, I don't know, that seems like a pretty easy sort of functionality to have and I, it's just, it's not there, but I mean, I don't know, it, it, it does the job, I guess. 
Finally, on the back here, you have the laptop sleeve. You know, you just kind of open up and it's this very large, slim pouch for, for your laptop. No real issues with the, with the laptop sleeve. And that's really it. Like, I, I wish I could tell you more like details about the bag, but that's, you know, the way I see it, that's kind of like, kind of like all there is going on here. So to kind of demo this bag, I've collected some items that I would typically bring with me on like a commute or like on my way to the gym. So let's kind of put that all in here and see, see what we think. So here it is all packed up and I will say uh, when it's full of things, I think it holds its sort of boxy form a lot better. That's, that's cool. Let's say I need to, to get something from this bag. Uh, easy enough if I'm like going for the for the smaller pouch like let's say I'm going into anaphylactic shock and I need to like save myself boom EpiPen done I hopefully make it to the hospital good to go but like you know if I'm going to the gym or something I gotta get into the main compartment here open her up and then so you'll notice I have this other bag for for my gym stuff and I Ideally, I could just like put this in some sort of some of it's like its own pouch inside this bag But again, there's no sub compartments here So I actually have to like, get this other bag within this bag to like organize my things like should I have to do that? But then you know and I even I have to sort of like take things out to like get to the bottom here to get my toiletries Which again is in another bag you have to stack things in my notebooks under this book and it's like and even just to get this far, I kind of had to unzip this all the way. If if I just like unzipped the top of it, it would have been even even harder to find things. And then you're kind of just digging. I can't even see. Like there's no. Okay, I'm going for the bottom. Here we go. I can yank it out, but then everything else there is just all messed up, and it's just a mess. It's just disarray. So like, I don't know, guys. Like, again, it looks great. I like wearing it around, but um. As far as when you actually need to use the bag as a bag and, and not so much just a, a fashion piece, it's, uh, it falls short in my opinion. That's just my thoughts on it. Uh, so I would love to hear yours for sure. So throw those in the comments. So I don't have a crystal ball here, obviously, but I think if I put a little more time, a little more research, a little more thought into my purchase, I probably would have ended up with a different bag. And to be clear here, I'm not hating on this bag. Like it's a good bag. It looks awesome. The brand definitely means something, and there's something sort of frivolously fun about being a part of the little Konkin Club. If you want a colorful bag with a cool silhouette, then yes, buy this bag. If you care a little more about look than utility, then yeah, take a look at this bag. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with fashion over function. That's kind of typically how I am, and that's okay. But if you want something to hold all your stuff, you know, efficiently, and you, you have two water bottles or you carry multiple computers around, or if clutter bothers you a little bit, I, I just cannot recommend this bag. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. But I will say, even though the functionality leaves a lot to be desired, I kind of like this guy. I don't know, maybe it just feels nice to sort of ride a trend. Uh, like maybe I want to pack up my own little stories in this bag and pass them down to my children. Or maybe I'm just a sucker for good branding. It's probably that one. Anyways, guys, that's another one in the books. As always, thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing. Uh, this channel is definitely sort of like all over the place right now. So if there is something you want to see, then please like leave it in the comments and I'll see what I can do about that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, be good and I'll see you soon.